Life as We Know It with Tom Walton. The late entertainer John Denver gave us a lot of wonderful music, including songs such as Take Me Home Country Roads, Rocky Mountain High, Thank God I'm a Country Boy, and Sunshine on My Shoulders. He also gave us a song many of us who grew up in Toledo wish he hadn't. Do you remember Saturday Night in Toledo, Ohio? You have to admit the lyrics were clever. It was an ode to Midwestern mediocrity and Rust Belt boredom, at least as the song's writer, Randy Sparks of the New Christie Minstrels, perceived it. Saturday Night in Toledo, Ohio, Denver sang, is like being nowhere at all. All through the day how the hours rush by. You sit in the park and you watch the grass die. Now Denver went on to sing that Toledo has entertainment to dazzle your eyes. You visit the bakery to watch the buns rise. Funny stuff, huh? He did give a nod to one of Toledo's best-known brands, Toledo Scales, although he did so with a slightly off-color reference. But the worst part was his walk-off line, which suggested that the women of Toledo were not attractive. In fact, he called them dogs. If nothing else, the preposterous line marked the entire tune as harmless satire. I remember the controversy the song generated at the time back in the 1970s. Toledo was either laughed along with it or resented the insults. As a writer myself, I saw both points of view. I understood that the song could have just as easily mocked any one of hundreds of American communities deemed by the Illuminati to somehow be at a cultural, intellectual, or geographic disadvantage. All Randy Sparks needed, actually, was to pick a town and state with the right number of syllables. Toledo, Ohio rolls off the tongue perfectly in the song. Six syllables. But so does St. Joseph, Missouri. Saturday night in St. Joseph, Missouri. See, that would have worked just fine. Or the song could have skewered a city such as Emporia, Kansas. Again, six syllables, perfect fit. But here's the thing. I get why Randy Sparks picked us. Not only did he actually visit here on a Saturday night, somewhere in the past somebody determined that Toledo embodied all that is considered lacking in the nation's midsection. Like Cleveland and its burning river, we were deemed unworthy. Who decided that? Somebody on one coast or the other, no doubt. During my career working for the owners of the Blade, I was blessed to be sent to Monterey, California, where I spent 14 years as editor of another of our company's newspapers. It was a dream assignment, and I loved every minute of it, but my early years there had their challenges. Foremost among them, the idea that the paper's new owners were from Toledo, Ohio. A lot of Monterey Peninsulans had a tough time wrapping their heads around the notion that their wealthy community's newspaper had been sold to a company from a place they perceived as a backwater. When they heard about something called the Great Black Swamp, well, let's just say that didn't help. Eventually, we got that misperception turned around. You talk to folks in Monterey now about those years, and they will tell you the paper was at its best when it was owned by publishers from Toledo. I had a tough choice to make back in 1988. I had to choose between returning to the Blade as editor or remaining as editor in Monterey. I didn't hesitate. I loved Monterey, but Toledo and Northwest Ohio were my roots. Take me home, country roads. I think even John Denver would have understood. Life as We Know It is written and hosted by Tom Walton and is a production of WGTE Public Media. Life as We Know It with Tom Walton can be heard on WGTE FM 91 every Monday afternoon during All Things Considered at 5.44 p.m. Or hear past episodes at wgte.org slash life.